Recluse will now show you how to install the EXP Auto Clutch for the KTM 690. We will begin with the prep and disassembly phase. Soak the EXP disc and friction discs in transmission oil for at least 5 minutes. For a quicker install, you can lay the bike over on a suitable bike stand to avoid draining the oil. If you prefer to leave the bike upright, you must drain your oil before starting the install process. Remove the right side swing arm bolt. This will allow you to access the clutch cover and bolts more easily. Remove the oil filter cover from the engine and rest it out of the way. Remove the clutch cover bolts, followed by the cover. Use caution here to avoid damaging the gasket. If the gasket is torn or damaged, replace with a new OEM gasket. Remove the pressure plate bolts, springs, and pressure plate. Remove the outer portion of the center hub, followed by the four inner hub springs. Remove the entire OEM clutch pack, including any judder springs. All of the OEM drive plates and frictions will be replaced with recluse frictions and drive plates. Remove the throw out. To remove the inner hub, we must remove the center clutch nut. Bend the tabs down on the tab lock washer first. You can use air to remove the center clutch nut, but do not use air to reinstall it, as it can become over torqued and cause constant clutch drag. As you pull out the inner hub, be sure to inspect the backside for a stuck thrust washer. The thrust washer is actually a three part piece on this model and should remain installed per OEM specification. If the two half pieces become unindexed, be sure to put them back within the groove surrounding the main shaft. Once these are confirmed to be in place, set the third piece of the thrust washer over the top of the two halves. Make sure the inner lip seats nicely over the two lower halves. We are now ready for part one of the install phase, hub assembly. This bike has a slipper clutch with a backwards design. Because of this, we must install the recluse clutch pack between the two hubs before placing it in the bike. Place the outer hub on a clean workbench or shop towel. Begin the clutch pack installation starting with a recluse friction disc, followed by a recluse drive plate. Continue this alternating pattern until you have seven friction discs and seven drive plates installed. The last part of the clutch pack will be the recluse EXP disc. Place this disc on top of the last drive plate. It can go on either side, there is no top or bottom. Now place the four OEM hub springs in the pockets on the outer hub. Align the two arrows located on each piece of the inner hub with each other and set the assembled clutch pack portion into the outer hub, ensuring the splines are lining up. Now compress the entire assembly together and use the two supplied 4mm Allen screws to hold the assembly together. These can be finger tight for now. It can be tricky getting the springs to stay located between the inner and outer hubs. Using a pick here can help keep them located. We can now move on to part 2 of the installation phase. The Recluse EXP includes 12 basket sleeves to prevent notching. Install these 12 sleeves into the tang slots of the basket. Lightly pinch and slide each of them down so the closed end makes contact with the bottom of the basket and the flat tabbed side is facing inward, towards the center of the clutch basket. Place the pre-assembled hub and clutch pack into the clutch basket, making sure that all friction tabs index into the correct basket slots and the inner hub spline indexes correctly on the main shaft. A recluse tech tip! The friction tabs can be tricky to align and using picks can help tremendously. Be patient and don't rush. You always want to make sure that the friction tabs don't accidentally get indexed into any half basket slots. Reinstall the OEM tab lock washer followed by the OEM center clutch nut. Use a torque wrench and torque the nut to 74 foot-pounds. Recluse tech tip, if you're having an issue with the clutch spinning, you can place the transmission in top gear and hold down on the rear brake pedal to prevent the clutch from spinning. Of course, on this model, you'll want to quickly attach the swing arm bolt to adequately apply brake pressure. Using channel lock pliers, bend the tabs up on the tab lock washer. We're now ready to reinstall the OEM throwout and pressure plate, 
followed by the springs and bolts. Torque the bolts to OEM spec. Now that everything is buttoned up here, don't forget to remove the two 4mm Allen bolts that were used to hold the clutch pack together. Now we can reinstall the clutch cover. There are two pins used on the KTM 690 to help index the gasket and cover. It is advised to place them in their OEM locations before installing the gasket and clutch cover. The clutch cover has three bolt lengths. One long, two medium, and the rest are small. Install the longest bolt here. Install the two medium length bolts here and here. Then all the rest are short. Torque the clutch cover bolts to OEM specification. Reinstall the oil filter cover and torque the bolts to OEM spec. Reinstall the foot peg assembly and swing arm bolt, torquing them to OEM spec. At this time we're ready for part 3 of the installation phase, the adjustable slave cylinder. Swap the bike to the left side. Again you can stand it upright or lay it over. Remove the slave cylinder cover. Loosen the bleed bolt. Loosen the clutch line bolt. Then remove the last slave cylinder bolt. Remove the slave cylinder and fully remove the clutch line and bleeder bolt. We will be reusing the OEM gasket with the new recluse slave cylinder. Use a pick to transfer the OEM o-ring from the old slave cylinder to the new recluse adjustable slave cylinder. After we bleed the new slave cylinder, we will reinstall the OEM bleed bolt and gasket. Ensure that the adjuster screw is backed out far enough to see the top o-ring and use your thumbs to depress the piston on the backside. Pour clutch fluid into the slave cylinder port. Note, it is very important to check whether your clutch system uses mineral oil or DOT4 brake fluid. The top of your clutch reservoir cap should tell you which type to use. With a 4mm Allen wrench, turn the adjuster screw clockwise until it bottoms out, keeping the fluid topped off. Once it bottoms out, turn the screw back out counterclockwise until the top o-ring is visible again. Use your thumb to compress the piston again. Repeat this process until there aren't any air bubbles coming out and top it off with fluid. Check that the ball bearing is still in place. Thread the bleed bolt back into the bleed port. Finger tight. Place the OEM gasket onto the new recluse adjustable slave cylinder. Now thread the clutch line bolt back into its port on the recluse adjustable slave cylinder. With the two bolts lightly attached, affix the adjustable slave cylinder to the bike. Secure the adjustable slave cylinder with the shorter bolt. Tighten the clutch line bolt and bleed bolt securely. Reinstall the OEM or aftermarket slave guard. It is important to note here that this particular 690 model has an aftermarket case guard that doesn't block the recluse adjustable slave cylinder. The OEM case guard does completely block the recluse adjustable slave cylinder and you can modify it to gain hassle-free access to the adjuster screw. From the slave cylinder bolt hole, measure 1.2 inches from the center and mark the location. At this mark, drill a 5 16th inch hole. This will allow you to make quick adjustments on the fly without the need to remove the case guard. If laid over, upright the bike before starting the bleed process. Remove the clutch reservoir cap. If the fluid level is low, bring it back up to 3 quarters full. Pop the dust cover off of the bleeder bolt. Attach the closed end of a box wrench to the bleeder bolt. For the most direct line to the bleed bolt, route the bleed tube down behind the pipe and inside the frame, and secure the tube to the bolt. Place the other end within a suitable catch bottle. With the bleed bolt still closed, pump the clutch lever 3-5 to five times. Hold the lever against the bars and crack open the bleed bolt. A small amount of fluid should be seen entering the bleed tube. Before letting the clutch lever out, close the bleed bolt. Ensuring that fluid remains in the clutch reservoir, repeat this process until no air bubbles can be seen in the bleed tube and the clutch lever feels normal. Fill the clutch reservoir to 3 quarters full. Reinstall the clutch fluid reservoir cap and detach the bleed tube from the bleed bolt. Reinstall the bleed bolt dust cap. Now we must set the installed gap for the auto clutch to function properly. 
Using the long end of a 4mm Allen wrench, turn the adjuster screw clockwise until you notice a sudden increase in turning effort, and note where the notch lies. This is known as the starting point. From the starting point, continue clockwise one full turn plus five tick marks. Note here, this is not an end-all, be-all setting and can vary depending on several factors. It is meant to get you in the general ballpark and ultimately will depend on where your free play gain measurement is. We're now ready to verify our install gap setting by checking that free play gain. There are two methods to checking free play gain. One, you can use the supplied rubber band, or you can use your index finger to apply pressure on the clutch lever. Either method will work, and when you understand what it is you're feeling for, you shouldn't need the rubber band anymore. With the motor warmed up and transmission in neutral, quickly blip the throttle to about half throttle. Ideally, the lever will quickly move in towards you one eighth of an inch. Before making another blip of the throttle, always allow the engine to reach idle. So let's say you have too much free play gain. This is adjusted by going clockwise on the adjustable slave cylinder, which creates less free play gain. On the flip side, if you don't have any free play gain, you must turn your adjuster screw counterclockwise until 1 8 inch of lever movement is detected. 1 8 inch is a critical measurement that ensures you get the very best life and performance from your Recluse EXP Auto Clutch. Do not ride without correct free play gain. Now that our free play gain is set, we can begin the final phase, break-in. We will start with rev cycles. With your hand off the clutch lever, rev the motor 10 times, being sure to let it return to idle between each rev. Now pull the clutch lever in and click down into first. Slowly release the lever. The bike should remain motionless and running. Now without touching the clutch lever, slowly roll on the throttle and accelerate to about 5000 RPMs and come to a complete stop. Repeat this five times. Now starting in second gear, repeat these roll-on takeoffs another five times. Once that's all done, re-verify that you still have an eighth inch of free play gain, and if so, you're ready to enjoy a better ride.